Welcome to section 6.6, .6, day two, systems of linear inequalities. One of our objectives today is to define systems of linear inequalities from graphs. So running a system from a graph. So if we look at this, we have it says, what system of inequalities is represented by the graph below? So what we wanna do is write the equations for the lines and use our inequality symbols. We did some of this last chapter when we only had one inequality on the graph. Now we're gonna have more than one. So to write it, you'll see it says on the bottom, it has the red boundary line is the slope has a negative one half slope and it crosses the region at five. That'd be the equation. And you'll see there's a light yellow shaded region there below the red line. If you're over here in this section, you'll see there's a shaded in yellow. Well, below the yellow line or the yellow is below the red line. That means we have a less than symbol. And our, if you also notice, the line is dashed. That's why it's just the less than symbol. For our blue line, if you look at the line, it has a slope of one. It goes across the y axis at negative one. So our equation would be y equals x minus one. But we want the inequality. You'll notice there's a shaded blue region above the blue line, light blue, and you'll see that we have a greater than or equal to inequality. So the inequality is y is greater than or equal to x minus one. And the common shaded area, when you mix yellow and blue, you get green. And this is the solution area. So we wanna be able to write a system of inequalities given a graph. We write the equation of the line, but instead of the equation, symbol, equal sign, we use inequality symbols, depending on where the shaded region is. Is it below or above the line that we are writing the inequality for? So here we have write a system of inequalities for this graph. The green area on this is the common shaded region. So let's do the red line first. If we do the red line, we look for the slope and we're going down one over two, down one over two. So y, I'm gonna leave the symbol out for now, is negative one half x. We cross the y axis at one, so it's plus one. And we are shaded below the line. That's where that yellow region is, below. And so we have a less than symbol. It is a dashed line, so we do not include the equal bar. For the blue line, we have, again, the y, but I'm not going to put in the inequality symbol yet. We have a slope of up one over two. So our slope is one half. We have one half x, and we are going through one also for the y-intercept. Again, we are shaded below the line. That's where that light blue region is. And so we are less than, it is a solid line, so we have the equal bar. And there is my system of inequalities for this graph. If we wanted to make sure our inequalities are correct, we can pick a point that is in the common shaded region and test it on both of our inequalities to make sure they both work. I will use the point zero, zero, because it's in the common shaded region. It is zero, using the red line, zero less than negative one half times zero plus one is zero less than one. It is. We're going to test in the blue line. Is zero less than or equal to one half times zero plus one? Is zero less than or equal to one? It is. This shows that our inequality symbols are the correct, at least less than signs. It won't show us if we have an equal bar or not, but it shows that the inequality is pointing in the right direction. This is writing a system from a graph. All right, I want you guys to try writing the system from this graph and see what you get. So pause the video and try it and then see if you get the same answer that I get. So for equation one, which is the bottom line, we have a slope of negative one. So y, we have negative x, or negative one times x, and we're going through the point for the y-intercept of negative one. If you notice, we are shaded above. The common area of shading is between the two lines. So we are greater than, and we are solid, so it's equal to. Y is greater than or equal to negative x minus one. 
for line number two. And we're going to have y. Our slope again is negative 1. So negative 1 times x is just negative x. We are going through the y-intercept of positive 1. In this case, we are shaded below, so we have a less than symbol. It is an open line, so we do not include the equal bar. And this is a system of equations that represents these, this common shaded region. So here we go. It says foot long subs cost $8 each and six inch subs cost $4 each. You can spend no more than $24 and must buy at least four sandwiches. What is a graph showing the number of sandwiches you can buy? So first thing we look at, we've been doing problems like this since 6.8. Three, we have to write our inequalities. We have two different types of sandwiches we're talking about, foot longs and six inch. So I'm gonna call X my foot long. And I'm gonna call Y my six inch. So we have these two different types of sandwiches. And it says we need to buy at least four sandwiches. So our X and our Y have to add up to at least, so greater than or equal to four sandwiches. Then it says we have, they're $8 each for a foot long, $6 or $4 each for a six inch, and we have no more than $24. So our money is eight times a foot long plus four times a six inch has to be less than or equal to $24. All right, those are my two inequalities. Now we need to graph them. We need to graph both these. I will rewrite them into slope-intercept form. There's less chance of making a mistake with inequalities this way. I'm gonna subtract x on the first equation, and I get y is greater than or equal to negative x plus four. So on my graph, I will need to label my graph. This is my foot long subs. This is my six inch sub. All right, so we label them. We're just gonna use a scale of one. This is technically my X axis, this is my Y axis. I am placing my axes on the edges of the graph, which you can do. We are going to start at four, and we have a slope of negative one, so we're right here. And we're gonna have a slope of negative one, so we're gonna have a line. And it is an equal bar, so it's solid line between the two, just like this. And if we had to shade this, we would shade above. I'm just gonna put an arrow to show that we're shading above that line. I'm gonna do red. We will rewrite this also. We're gonna subtract 8x. And we get 4y is less than or equal to negative 8x plus 24. Divide out the four. And we get y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus six. So we are going to be right here, have a slope of negative two, and we're right here. And we have a equal bar, so it's a, again a line. And we need to be less than, so we're going to be shading below this way. Well, where the purple line is shaded above and the red line is shaded below is in this region right here. All right, so that is the common shaded area for these two inequalities. This shaded region is the solution set for the types of sandwiches we could buy. So if you were asked what are the combinations of sandwiches, we could answer that if we had zero foot longs, so this is foot, this is six inch, we could have six or zero foot longs with four, six inch, we could have zero foot longs with five, we could have zero foot longs with six. And there's one other combination that works. Actually, there's two other combinations that works. One's right here, and one is right here. We could have one foot long with four six inch, and we could also have two of each. And I'm running out of room, but we'd have two foot longs and two six inch. Those are the only combinations that work for this problem because we can't buy partial sandwiches. So find the common shaded region like we've been doing, and then from there, if it asks for what are possible solutions or label one solution, you would find a point that is in the common shaded region. And this one, since the lines are included, we can include points that are on the lines. 
the theater club is selling shirts. They have only enough supplies to print 120 shirts. They will sell sweatshirts for $22 and t-shirts for $15 with a goal of at least $2,000 in sales. We are talking about two different things, sweatshirts and t-shirts. So those will be our variables. I'll say that X is for sweatshirts and Y is for t-shirts. We can only print up to 120 shirts. That's our quantity. So X plus Y has to be less than or equal to 120. We are selling the sweatshirts for $22 and t-shirts for 15. So that goes with our variables. 22 times how many sweatshirts plus 15 times how many t-shirts. We want to get at least $2,000 in sales. So we want to be greater than or equal to 2,000. We need to label our graph. So our graph, we have sweatshirts on the bottom because that's how I labeled it for the variables. And we have t-shirts on the side here. It's hard to write with this uh, stylus sometimes. Uh, we can go, we have a big enough grid here. I'm gonna go by tens. So this will be 20. I'm gonna rewrite the first equation into slope intercept form, subtract x from both sides, we get y is less than or equal to negative x plus 120. I'm going to graph this in red. So less than or equal to negative x plus 120, we start here, and it has a slope of uh, negative 1. So we're actually going to go all the way from 120 to 120. And this is shaded below we are shaded below here. I'm going to graph the other linear inequality using the intercept method. So if I make my y go to zero, I'm left with 22x is greater than or equal to 2000. And my x-intercept is 90.9. To get my y-intercept, I make my x go to zero. And I get 15y is greater than or equal to 2000. And when I divide it out, my y-intercept is 133 and a third. For this graphing like this, this is work, gonna work out for us. Right, so our y-intercept is at 90.9, which is right above the 90. Our x-intercept is at 133 and a third, which is just past 130. And if we connect them with a line, see how well I can do this. We have a nice line and we are shaded above the line. So we are shaded above here and our common shaded region between shading below and shading above is right here. This is my common shaded region and I should probably do this in purple so you can see it better. But our common shaded region is right in here. This is where we have our possible combinations of items, sweatshirts and t-shirts that when we sell this many will give us our $2,000. You'll notice on this slide and the last slide, we did not graph outside of the first quadrant. We only had a graph in the first quadrant because we can't sell negative sweatshirts. So there's no reason to go into quadrant two, which is to the left of the Y axis. So we only are doing this in the first quadrant and most of the word problems that we deal with are quite a few will only work. We will only graph in the first quadrant. This is an example of linear programming. We can take multiple inequalities and put them on the same graph to see a combination of things that work. On your homework today, you will see things that have three or four different inequalities and you will find a common shaded region. That is all for 6.6 .6 day two. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.